Portage Mules back. It's mid-September 2022 and we're headed out of Mudrow with Rob. Hello. It's nice to see you again. Me. Hashtag Mudrow. And we're out early trying to get to Crooked Lake in a day by way of the Horse River. We like to get to Arrowhead Outdoors right when they open to grab our bait, which puts us at the entry point around 6 a.m. And by the time we get everything offloaded and ready to go, it's just about 7 30 ish. Dead camera. We took this route in May and June when the water was much higher, and within 15 minutes we're already coming upon new portages like this one. With just that new first portage getting to Mudrow, everything else on Sand Pit, Tin Can, Mike, and Horse was the same as in May and June. But that all changed entering the Horse River. So, it's September 17th, Saturday. In May, this was completely covered in water, all of it. And uh, now we're reduced to a whole lot more portaging. And we've got people catching up to us. It's 1.45. We're in the Horse River. We only have one portage left to go. This is your midday recap. It's hot. It's raining. Half of our minnows are dead. There's a lot more portages than what we had intended because the beavers have dammed up the Horse River at the top. Rob's out of water. We've done 11 and a half miles so far. One more portage on horse, then the portage around Basswood. Well, we're at Three Mile Island right now. And Three Mile Island's actually about 21 miles in, but we call it that because it was the site of Rob's first meltdown last trip. So we've gotten out. And Rob tends to get a little hangry. I do. Rob, do you want a sandwich? Nope, but I would like uh, Kind Bars, Reese's Peanut, Buttercup. I think he wants a sandwich. Twizzlers. But all I have is this. What is that? <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> is that for me? Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I get to eat it right now? Yeah. Oh, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. It's real. <laughs> I thought it might be a fake one. <laughs> Just so you could see. I'm gonna open it up. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. This is living. After our rest at the Three Mile Island, just past Wednesday Bay, we paddled the rest of the way to our campsite for the week. We just got to our number one pick right here. Same place we're at in June. And we're pretty pumped because it's a great five star campsite, but the people before it, <laughs> Might not be too familiar with the rules. Our fireplace is just loaded down with trash. There's a ketchup, half of a ketchup bottle that I don't know if they thought people were going to use it, but I don't think we trust that. And you know, it's just, it's weird. A bunch of these branches, this whole sapling has been stripped. You can see the All the sap coming off it, but it's it's pack it in, pack it out. You're not supposed to burn your trash. You're definitely not supposed to just leave it around the campsite. I mean, within a minute of getting here, we, we thought there were people here because we were seeing stuff as we were paddling by, but lo and behold, it's just 
it's just trash. Just try to be a good steward of the land because the Forest Service, I don't know, they could shut it down, they could change campsites, they could close this. What do you got, big dog? My worms got smashed. They still good? Did you try one? Yep, they're good. <laughs> Lots of good news. When we're here in June, to give you guys an idea, this rock right here that I'm standing on is where we were putting in. And that is how far the water's gone down. Pretty amazing. As always, our dinner the first night is steaks that we packed in frozen. We normally add some sides, but I think tonight we were so tired, it was all we could do to grill the steaks and head to bed. Well, good morning. Today is our first day out on Crooked Lake. So, some of you might have noticed that we had a May video come out and this is a September video. We had a June video that we're trying to uh, potentially still get put together. However, um, we've had some technical difficulties with loss of data. So, anyhow, um, thanks for being patient with us between takes, so to speak. But uh, just wanted to show you, this here is our campsite. It's uh, probably one of the best ones we've been on. It's got this nice big rock face out in the front. You've got about three different tent uh, sites. And then the fire pit right there on the front. So uh, a lot of trees to hang stuff from, guy lines and different things. It's a uh, awesome site. So right now, Ben and I are getting ready to head out to our little spot uh, that we like to call the special place. And uh, we're both looking forward to breakfast. It rained last night quite a bit. Um, met a lot of people leaving yesterday who were tired of the rain. Uh, it rained quite a bit prior to us arriving. So anyway, we're excited to be out here in the beautiful Boundary Waters. U.S. edition, since we are straddling the international line. So we're headed out to the special place, which is an area on Crooked Lake where the lake narrows, creating moving water and a lot of opportunity to fish different depths. Toss it up here. Hang on, I'm going to kind of practice. Underneath your seat, left side. Put your hand down. probably. Okay, there we go. Oh, so he's a 15 inch walleye. Does it look bigger like this? <laughs> Closer. No, to the camera. We're gonna put him back. Down he goes. Well, at least we know that they'll eat leeches and we're not gonna starve. <laughs> that was on a gold glitter jig. There. 3 8 ounce. We could probably drop down a quarter ounce, but since I've got this on, I'm going to still keep using it. And it has a red shank. And we're using uh, leeches that are from uh, August. From Vados. And they just had small and mediums. Because usually there's nothing available up 
up at this time of the year, but once we got up here, we found out that they had leeches. Large, Large leeches. So we got two dozen more. So this technique that I'm using is not really jigging, just finding the bottom and just lifting it up a little bit. Just kind of let it hover. Fish. What are you waiting for? Well, I was on a rock a second ago. <laughs> Oh, that's a good fish. Oh. I think it might be a bass. It's a bass. Smally. to learn how to open, open, do two things at once. Oh, small wall, or uh, small, uh, smally. You wish it was a walleye. I do wish it was a walleye. <laughs> but nice little guy, he's probably about about 16 inches. I'm happy to know that these smaller ones, you know, that they're, that they're catching fish. The wall, eh? Yeah. Is this an edible? Oh, it's going to be edible. And what about netable? Oh, netable. Yeah. Nice one. Oh, he's a jumper. Boy, he's real nice. There you go. My first walleye. Second one for us. Hey, that's a perfect walleye. It's actually 20, 20 inches. Here we go, but today we're not keeping them um, because we still have some food. So he's going back in. Rob's still using a heavier jig. That was on the one quarter ounce. I don't know if I said that before or not. This right here. So I'm trying to think, do I go to a quarter in, quarter ounce, you think? I would. What's your technique? You're, are you, you're, not get, you're not getting hung up on it with you or? Honestly, I was pretty close to switching back to the 3 8 ounce because I, I can't feel the bottom. I'm just out. I'm two, I'm two jigs down now on 3 8 I'm going to get water. I'm trying to 
get in that eddy. This little, yeah, line right here. Try to just keep this net up by me, or? Probably. Well, I mean, technically, no. <laughs> no, you should have it. <laughs> you should have it by me since I'm the one netting your fish. <laughs> If it's up there, that's you saying, I'll get, I'll yeah, get ready for you. Yeah, you're right here. I'm gonna, let me send this back to you. Hey, you can catch fish like that all day and I'll be happy to net them. I just lost my glitter and gold jig. So now I'm going with a orange, yellow, and chartreuse. Short shaft, 3 8 ounce, red shank. with our fine specimen who is going to go down and do a little dance for us. Oh, I got a fish. I thought it'd rock. <laughs> Ow. Oh, wow. He got that one down in there a minute. Don't move, don't move. Stop getting slimy. Sixteen, sixteen and a half. Another great eater. Got him on the counter. Yep. It's good to be fishing after a long day yesterday. It only took us ten hours. I say only ten hours, but we were figuring it was going to take a lot longer than that. Which is actually how long it took us the last time we came up here, but we had to scramble around to find a campsite last time, whereas this time we went to the site we wanted right away. But there were three extra portages yesterday on the Horse River. I should say more than we had to do last time because the beavers had dammed up the very front of the river. But they were short portages. They were just basically around some uh, rocks and boulders that were that were in there not very far and actually one of them we didn't have to take the gear out we just had to walk around it but it seemed like we were making horrible time i don't know what happened if we just turned on the jets when we got to crooked lake or what but didn't get a whole lot of video yesterday we were pressed for time as you saw us setting up in the dark we got to our campsite with about an hour hour and a half to go and had to set everything up, which made for a little bit of a late morning this morning because we didn't set up any of the fishing stuff or any of the camera stuff and all that had to be done today, which is why we're not out here until noon. But I got this, this tiger stripe, short shaft, 3 8 ounce jig that I'm trying with a leech. We think well, we know most of our minnows died. We had them for about six hours in the bag that they came with from uh, the bait store. And after six hours, we put them in the minnow bucket and changed out water as we were paddling. But they just weren't hardy enough. We still have a few. I think Rob said about two dozen, two dozen. We knew it was a little bit of a gamble, but it really stinks. We do have the leeches. But we brought a minnow trap, and we're going to test that out and see how well that works. So far, it has not. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, fishing sure is fun. I need to say thanks to my dad for taking me fishing and bringing me up here. 
he doesn't make the trip anymore because he's found a new way to catch walleye. Ben's had the pleasure. I though have not. I guess if Rob's thanking somebody for teaching him how to walleye fish, I should probably thank somebody as well, so. You're welcome, bud. Thank you, Rob's dad. <laughs> I thought you were gonna thank me. For what? Teaching you how to walleye fish. <laughs> I mean, come on, back when take a kid fishing. <laughs> Our first day fishing, we typically spend trying to find where the fish are. Although in June, we had a lot of luck in this area at the start of the moving water close to our campsite. Now, with the water being lower, we moved further downstream to fish a little deeper. Right now, we're changing up lures, jig head colors, and weights. Rob's using leeches, and I'm trying minnows. The problem was, there were tons of little bait-stealing smallmouths in the area, and we were having a hard time trying to find the walleye without getting bit off first. There we go. Swimming right towards me. size little bass on this uh, 110 perch whopper plopper thank you Dustin for the recommendation <laughs> look at guy. the the lures bigger than the fish <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Those bass are crazy. Trying to eat a lure, it's a fish the same size as it. If we thought it was a real fish, where would it even go? Gone. That was a northern. Yeah. Gosh. There goes that whopper flopper. There it is right there. Yeah. I'll pull up and dry on it. Yep. Did right. northern grab my hand as I'm grabbing this? <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. That I mean that was like a monstrous hit. Right next to the boat, too. Yeah. Jeez. Probably should throw uh, leaders on them, huh? I'm sure glad we got them back, though. Breakfast? Yep. <laughs> it is time for breakfast. We return to camp to have our evening breakfast. Rob and I pack in real eggs for breakfast and use powdered eggs for the egg wash for the fish. For the first couple days, we also have real bacon that we froze and packed in. After that, we normally just fry up sausage. Well, it's about 5.50 on Sunday. Rob and I just had breakfast and we're out in a little bay right by our campsite. We started off with the Whopper Ploppers but we realized that most of what was biting were our northern pike. So we're changing up to spoons. And Rob is starting with Larry's Copper Magic. And I have 
a classic daredevil. You got a fish? No. No. These are the daredevils. This is what just tried to hit. This right here. Yeah. Northern? No, it was a little bass. Oh, wow. Oh, boy, man. Okay, fish on. This might be the Megalopike. I know. Grab the leader. Oh. All right, this little guy, just on there. Like a sack full of that candle. Come on. And he's gone. <laughs> uh, I don't know what Brandon, I'm stuck in now. I, I don't, I don't know where that cast was even going. It just took off like a rocket. <laughs> Got it. Got it back. Not a lot of luck on the smallmouth. But we scrounged around for wood, and although we just ate breakfast, it's 6.30, sun goes down an hour and 15 minutes, so it's time for dinner. Tonight is cheddar brats and sautéed peppers and onions. Are you making an appetizer, Rob? Yeah. Tootsie Rolls? Uh, no. Oh. Some red potatoes cut nice and thin so they fry up quick. All right. And some Johnsonville jalapeno cheddar. You're boiling them, I said saute. Yes, sir. Yes, chef. Look at the background. So, a lot of people make their own bread out here in Dutch ovens or, or whatever, just in the frying pan, but Rob and I aren't that fancy. We get something when it's available, which it wasn't the last couple trips, and I'm not making this up. They're called Slender Rounds, and they're small pieces of bread. Let's see if I can do this without burning myself. Oh. Oh, they hit the spot out here. They might be totally inedible back home, but we like them because they're small, as you can see, they're very thin, so they fit in the pack pretty well, don't take up a lot of space, and they just, you don't need to do much to them. <laughs> may not look like much, but it's so good. 
Give it a one out of ten. Boundary water is one out of ten. That's a good solid eight and a half. Hold on. Did I go up? That's a ten. <laughs> and a lot of this stuff we have to eat now because it's perishable. Certainly the sausage. The potatoes will probably keep another couple days. The peppers, depending on how hot it is, might keep, they'll keep tomorrow, maybe one more day. The onion, I don't know, probably forever, but. And the peppers were two days, two days in? Yeah, peppers are already two days in. Well, there's the. Oh, not peppers, I'm sorry, yeah, sausages. Sausages. So. So we gotta eat up. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part of our trip when the walleye bite heats up as the temperature drops.